I would like to introduce you to my new daily driver. You'll never guess what it is. A Porsche 911 Turbo S. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the spec on this car because it's a little bit unusual. It's not gonna be what you're expecting. Also, I'm gonna tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what it's like to live with. And I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and compare that to all the other daily drivers I've had over the past few years. If you like these kind of reviews, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. That way you won't miss any videos. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the spec on this car. It's a rather understated colour, this. It's called GT Metallic Silver. It's a no-cost option. Now, most people have their 911 Turbo S's murdered out. This one's pretty under the radar. It's got the standard wheels on it as well. 20s at the front, 21s at the rear. The best bit, though, is the inside. I love the colour combo on this car. It's really, really nice. I do like a light interior, and this is a particularly nice one. And it's got what's known as the Heritage Design Package Exclusive Manufacturer. So you have this contrasting dash with the beige below it. You have the corduroy on the seats. You've got Exclusive Manufacturer embossed here on the centre armrest. You've got the Porsche crest on the headrest. You've also got a little 911 badge there. And you've even got these green elements on the dials. It's all supposed to hark back to 911s of yesteryear. £4,440 though. Another option fitted to this car is the Tilton Slide sunroof. £1,238. I don't think I'll bother with that. I also wouldn't bother with the £203 air ioniser. You see when Lewis was in the car earlier and he did a fart, he didn't seem to clear that particularly well. I would bother with this though. The ambient lighting is £354 and look, you can choose between those different colours. I'm going to leave it on lime green to match the dials. There are some styling options on the outside of the car which do add to the cost a little bit, which I wouldn't bother with. For instance, if you don't want this black and you want it body coloured, £354. Model designation in gloss black, 168 quid. What? If you want to give your car some eyeliner in the form of these black headlights around, £434. No, thank you. To have your taillight smoked, not like a kipper, but just made a little bit grey, £590. Quite like the look, but still, mm, probably not. Normally, this part of the door mirror is black. Reason being that Porsche knows that people will pay £380 to not have it black, but to have it body coloured. Mm. If you don't like the fact that as standard, the car gets yellow paint on its calipers, you can pay £581 to have a different colour, such as this more discreet black. This is the most cynical option though. Tire puncture repair kit. It's £42. Should be standard. In fact, older 911s like my 996 actually came with a space saver spare wheel, but no, now you're having to pay extra for this loop. Brilliant. So the starting price of the 911 Turbo S is £156,000. And this one with options, of which I'll reveal a few more later on, is £170,000. To be fair though, the 911 Turbo S does come with a lot of kit as standard, especially stuff that improves the way it drives, such as it gets rear wheel steering, it's got active anti-roll bars which stop the car leaning so much in the bends, you've also got adaptive dampers as well, and a really clever function that when you put it into Sports Plus mode, you get this spoiler at the front that lowers ever so slightly to improve your aero. Carbon ceramic brakes are also standard fit. So you've got 420 millimeter discs at the front, 390 at the rear, 10 piston calipers at the front, and four piston at the rear. Let's try them out. Brake test from 60 miles an hour. How long will it take to stop? Here we go. That's impressive. So it stopped from 60 miles an hour in just 30 meters. That is incredible. You're probably more interested in how this car goes than stops. So let's talk about the engine, which you can't see. It's hidden underneath. Anyhow, it's a 3.8 litre twin turbo flat six with 650 horsepower and 800 newton metres of torque. It drives all four wheels via an eight speed automatic gearbox with dual clutches and launch control. Now we'll come to the launch later. I'm going to compare the actual launch capability of this car to all my other previous dailies, especially 0 to 16, 2.7 seconds, but we'll find out for real a bit later on. Also, this engine can propel the car to 205 miles an hour, which is pretty insane. Thing is though, Porsche has done some things to this to make sure it's drivable every day. For instance, the turbochargers, they actually spool up in opposite directions and that makes them more responsive apparently. But let's find out. One of the great things about this engine is that even though it's turbocharged and you've got loads of power, there's not too much turbo lag. In fact, when the turbo really comes on boost, it's illustrated by this green line here. So it's about there. So I'm cruising in fourth 
at 40 miles an hour. I want to overtake, so I'm going to accelerate. We're in a bit of a lag zone there. Now it's on boost and it's going. And now I need to just stop because that's the speed limit. I mean, it's nuts. I'm actually going to do it from fifth, right, from 40. Here we go. So lag a bit, but it, it's picking up okay. Now we're getting to boost and we're on boost and we're off. You know, that is impressive. So if you're keeping it in that green zone, I'm now, I'm on boost. And then there's hardly any lag at all. <laughs> it's so insanely quick. Oh, wow. Great engine. One option I haven't told you about that's fitted to this car is the 2,180 pound sports exhaust system. So let's have a listen to it. Start the car up. Give it some revs. Oh no, it seems like this is fitted with a soft limiter, so you can't really enjoy revving it when it's stationary. Cut it, cut it. Now you might be wondering why I've got this Hyundai i30N next to me. Well, that's to compare this car sound to this one. So start the Hyundai. That already sounds better. Give it some revs. Right, that's enough of that. Who'd ever thought we'd see the day that a Hyundai sounds better than a Porsche? But it just does. Now you might be thinking, well, that's because of the soft limiter. Maybe they're better when they're moving. So I'm going to give you a montage of both cars driving and you can then compare their sounds that way as well. know what you think in the comments. Now if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Hyundai i30N, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Ironically, where this Turbo S is better is daily driving around town. You see this is fitted with adaptive dampers as standard. In fact this deals with bumps so well that it's even better than that Hyundai. Even when you put that Hyundai in its comfort mode for its adaptive dampers. Considering you've got supercar performance, well, it is a supercar, this. The visibility is amazing. Great view out the front, big windscreen, big side windows, decent door mirrors, good view out the back. It's so easy to drive. The steering is light enough when you've got the car in normal mode. It's really good and as standard, you get all around parking sensors, which is handy, and a reversing camera. However, if you want a forward facing camera and surround view, then you're gonna have to pay an extra 700 pounds for the graded camera package, but it does help. You can see how easy this car is to park. Oh. I've got to squeeze it between here and another car that doesn't seem to want to move. Still, I'm using that to look around to make sure I don't clip his wheel. Oh, he's realized. Good on him. And then the other side of that other car. See, this surround view camera is worth it. You know, if you spend this much money on a car, spend the extra 700 pounds to get this upgraded parking package because I'm just totally relying on that to save my alloy wheels and my paintwork. This is the everyday supercar facts. One thing that does affect the everyday usability of this car for me personally is the fact that while it does come with Apple CarPlay, it doesn't have Android Auto, so I can't use my Google Maps. I have to rely on the normal sat-nav, and you know, if I want to use the other features of Android Auto, I can't. The ironic thing is this, look, I've got Android Auto in my old 1999 model year 996. Look, there it is, in all its glory. To be fair, this is an accessory you can now get from Porsche, which fits classic Porsches. It's really, really cool. Another thing about this car is that it feels really well made and super luxurious. So you think it's like a luxury car, but it's nowhere near as quiet as a luxury car. Those big tires just make so much road noise when you're cruising at speed. I mean, listen to this. I'm doing 70 and there's a lot of road noise. This is still a sports car. You have to remember it, even though you might be fooled by the quality of the materials inside. That does get you on your nerves after a while on a long journey, believe me. What I can't fault so much though is the economy. Now this thing is averaging 23 miles per gallon, which you might be thinking, well, that's terrible. But actually, when you consider the performance of this thing, it's not, it's decent. I reckon I get about 23 miles per gallon, probably even less from my old 996, and it just doesn't have anything like the performance of this thing. Now, this particular car that I've got has 10,000 miles on it, so how's it feeling after 10,000 miles? I can hear the odd creak from the trim here, just ever so slightly, but that is the only rattle I'm picking up, and it's just a little bit of leather, like rubbing against another bit of leather. Most people aren't gonna notice that, it's just that I've got OCD for these things. No, even when driving over cat's eyes. No, it's not. <laughs> and that noise you might have heard then, that ah, ah, is the car warning me that I'm moving about in the road, which I shouldn't be. Another thing that annoys me about this car is that you have to pay extra for the adaptive cruise control, which will keep you a safe distance from the car in front, and auto steer to keep you in lane. It's 1,800 pounds more. What? 
you know, that's standard on a Toyota Yaris. I hate the way the Germans do that, you know. They always charge it extra for the stuff like that. And a lot of people won't specify because they think, oh, I don't really need that. But believe me, once you've lived with a car that has auto cruise control and you do lots of miles on the motorway, you will use it over and over again. I would not buy a car without it. Facts. Not gonna lie, this is the least practical daily driver I've ever had. And that's not ideal when you consider that I've got a baby. Still, at least you've got Isofix anchor points there. And there is enough room for a child seat. Um, I hope it fits. Otherwise the baby's going back. Ah, yeah. Your luck is in grace, you can stay. One of the great things about the 911, and like many other sports cars, is the fact that it has some rear seats. Now, I've actually moved this chair as far forward as I can. Knee room's all right, head room's not good, and the back's quite upright, but I can go in the back of this car, so we can still travel as a family. Granted, we won't be as comfortable as if we're in one of my old daily drivers, such as the BMW M5 CS, and definitely not the Audi RS6, but it's a Porsche 911 Turbo S. I'm willing to make some sacrifices here. The Porsche 911 Turbo S has always had a bit of a reputation for being a one-trick pony. You know, it's all about just going fast in a straight line. Now, I like going fast in a straight line, obviously, with all the drag racing. But this one has much more depth to it than previous 911 Turbos. It's just more playful, more agile. I don't know if it's the rear-wheel steering that gets it pitching into bends a bit more, but it does just move about beneath you a lot more. As a result, it is immensely good fun. It's really good on a twisty road such as this. I've got it in its Sport Plus mode, but I've made the suspension go to the softer settings. It just deals with British bumps much better. It does that thing where it grips and holds and catapults you out the turns, but you feel a lot of what's going on beneath you through your bottom. And the car will rotate around as well when you lift off the accelerator or floor it. It's a really good job by Porsche. They've made it the all-round consummate sports car. In the past, I said, you know, I don't really get the 911 Turbo S, just get an entry level 911 or a GT3. Now it's Turbo S or entry level car, and only really the GT cars if you're going to be track daying regularly. It's so good. And I have taken this car on track, and it blew me away. Really, really capable, really fast, really easy to control, and good fun. Not just about the performance, but the performance still stands out. Oh, it's got so much grunt. It's really good at putting its power down. The torque vectoring ensures that you're just maximizing all that power. I'll tell you what also helps, the gearbox. So in automatic mode, it does a good job of just being super comfy, relaxing, and smooth. You take control in manual, and it's a racing car gearbox almost. Look, whoa, those changes are bang, bang, bang. You don't get a massive kick in the back when you change gear, like you do in some other cars, which are fake to tell you the truth. This is just fast, sharp, and smooth. I've got to give a special mention to the brakes. Carbon ceramics can sometimes seem a bit grabby, but these aren't. And on track, oh my God, you can pound this thing lap after lap after lap after lap, and the brakes just stay solid. So the 992 generation of 911 is the most fun turbo that Porsche has ever built. It's also the quickest. Now I'm going to launch from 0 to 60, but before we do that, let's run through the 0 to 60 times I've achieved in all my other daily drivers. God. <laughs> 0 to 63.4 seconds. <laughs> oh, the way this launches is insane. 3.6 seconds. It's a struggle to put the power down. Yeah, it is. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 4.96. It just blooming rockets in 4.3 seconds. That shot off good. Not 60, 3.03 seconds. Got a 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Boy, oh, hooks. Looks good, 2.88 seconds. <laughs> now let's see how this Porsche 911 Turbo S's acceleration to 60 miles an hour compares to all the other cars. It's gotta beat that BMW. To be fair, on the Porsche, the BMW was launching on a test track with a great surface. This is just a road with a poor surface, but it's a Porsche and it's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. It's basically just floating. The wheels are spinning, you know. It wasn't fully getting maximum traction. It's still at a 2.8, despite the fact I was just wheel spinning. 
So not the 2.7, but do you know what? I'm gonna turn around and go the other way and see if I can get a slightly better time. One last go, let's do it. Two point seven four. I'll take that. So then, what did I think about the nine eleven Turbo S? Well, my original verdict of go ahead and buy it if you can hasn't changed since spending some time with it. It's an absolutely fabulous car. Now I'm gonna be doing some more things with this over the coming months, including drag racing it. In fact, this car's already been in quite a few car wire drag races. If you don't wanna miss out on any of the content I'm doing on it, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. <laughs>